Older office PCs that you can typically find for cheap on eBay make great emulation systems. Specifically, standalone retro emulation systems. These aren't going to be the kind of monstrosities that can emulate PS3, but a lot of used PCs you can find for about $50 should get you all the way to PS2 and GameCube. At least for the vast majority of games for those systems. In this video, I'm going to cover a couple of Office-style computers that I've used for emulation in the past to kind of go over what the specs are, what they can do, and what to look out for, as well as talk about some of the benefits and setbacks. I'm a serious advocate for these kind of emulation systems. A lot of these computers, including the ones I'm going to cover, are right on the verge of being e-waste to a lot of people. While they're still pretty decent for web browsing and basic use, they often get overlooked for a few reasons. Like their limitations in regards to modern PC gaming, and the Windows hardware requirements that make them incompatible with Windows 11, at least without a workaround. But creating a standalone emulation system breathes new life into these older machines. And I hate to see good tech go to waste, which is why I'm still haunted by the day I saw Fifty Shades of Beige beat an innocent computer to death. Now, right off the bat, I'll point out that there are several pre-built emulation systems you can buy that are plug-and-play. Everything is loaded up on them, ready to roll, and a lot of people do prefer that over building their own system. Which is understandable, as there's certainly a level of convenience that way that's hard to match. But, if you compare the specs of one of those systems that cost around a hundred dollars to one of the older Office computers that cost around 50, you'll find that the Office PC is often far more powerful and cheaper, especially if you know what to look out for. So if you have the knowledge to build your own standalone emulation system, converting a used PC may be the way to go. It's not terribly difficult, and there's a lot of solid videos out there detailing how to do this. Retro Game Core and Tech Dweeb are both really good channels that have guides on how to do that. These are the two computers that I'm going to test out for this video. The HP ProDesk 600G1 and the HP Elite Desk 800G2. Both of these cost about $50 complete when I bought them a while ago. I've had good luck with the 400, 600, and 800 G2 models, and you can typically find those for cheap. The G1 models are pretty capable as well, though for the price, it's probably worth the extra $10 or so to go with the G2. Generally, most of these Elite Desk and Pro Desk models are pretty solid for emulation. Emulation? Are you going to emulate some PS1s? PS1 is probably good to go, so when we test them out, we'll jump straight into PS2. But you gotta play some PS1! I apologize for Lil Cloud. Every time I let him out of his cloud cage, he gets out of control. You know who's really out of control? There's some Sephiroths! Enough. Alright, as you can see, I've chosen two different form factors because some people do prefer a smaller, more compact device for emulation. The emulator is often a secondary device and they just want to put it beside their TV or something without taking up too much space. Which is a nice feature, but as with most technology, you do end up paying for the more compact size. 
one way or another. Typically, you either pay more for a smaller device that's close to as capable as the standard desktop size, or you pay the same amount for less computing power and sacrifice performance. Now, that's not always the case 100% of the time, but it is pretty common, and something to be aware of. We'll start with the smaller mini form factor model, which again won't be quite as capable. This is the mini HP ProDesk 600G1. It's running the i3 4160T, which is the lower powered version of the CPU, but it still does pretty well. It only has 8 gigabytes of RAM, but that's what it came with. So I want to keep it close to how it was when I bought it at the lower price point. I have a 2.5 inch SSD I've already flashed Bodicera to, so I'll just load this into the system, boot it up, and it should be ready to go. Starting with Final Fantasy X, which is actually running pretty well. I've been playing for a while now and haven't experienced any kind of slowdowns or frame skipping or anything like that. It's looking pretty good, so at least some of the lower end PS2 games will run. Next, I'm trying GTA San Andreas, which this came out later in the system's lifespan, so it is more demanding. And it's pretty clear we've hit our upper limit here. The game slowed down to the point where it's not even playable. The Mini G2 model might have been able to handle this, but those aren't quite as cheap as this one. I also hopped on a little double dash on the GameCube, and it also ran perfectly. Overall, I would say we're equipped for PS1, Dreamcast, and some PS2 and GameCube games, depending on how demanding they are. Next up is the small form factor Elite Desk 800 G2. It's the next model in the series, and also the standard size, so we should see in improved performance from this. It's running the i5-6500 CPU and 16 gigabytes of DDR4-2133 RAM. On this system, I jumped right into San Andreas, and the game is running well. It might be a push to upscale this game specifically, but when I went back to Final Fantasy X and upscaled on this computer, it's still running perfectly. I'm not sure if it translates with the capture box I'm using, but it actually looks really sharp. It seems like most of the PS2 roster is going to be playable on this, even with upscaling on a lot of games. I jumped over to PSP next. Generally, you wouldn't expect this system to be more demanding than PS2, but when it comes to emulation, it can be rough. I went heavy on the upscaling. Four times upscaling, four times resolution, and we're still looking good on this game. No slowdowns, no frame skips, no need to unleash the pull noodle performance boost. I know people do like the smaller emulation boxes, but in terms of performance, you get a serious jump with the standard size desktop. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.